Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another uh, webinar from Las Musas. My name is Mayra Cuevas. I am the author of Salty Bittersweet. And this is my agent, Saritza Hernandez. Hi, Sari. Hi. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in Atlanta, and Saritza is in Orlando. We would love to know where you are dialing from. So please put some messages there on the chat box and let us know where you are uh, as we get started. Uh, a little bit about Sarisa. Sarisa is a, a vice president and senior literary agent uh, at the Corvisiero Literary Agency. She has uh, been working in publishing for more than 17 years. So there's a lot, a lot of experience. <laughs> and I call her the fairy madrina godmother because she made all of my publishing dreams come true. And she is just absolutely amazing. Uh, so Sarisa. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience and what does an agent do? Hi, everybody. Well, yeah, I mean, that was an awesome introduction. I think I'm just going to have <laughs> Maida introduce me everywhere, like to any person I ever want. Please uh, allow her to <laughs> escort me through. I have been in the uh, publishing industry, as Maida said, for over 17 years. It still baffles me uh, that it's been that long um, because I still remember almost the very, you know, starting from the very beginning. Um, as, as just an admin assistant to an editor and then learning the ropes that way. Um, I've worked in pretty much every uh, aspect of publishing that you can think of, like I said, from an admin um, all the way up to um, editorial and uh, licensing and tech, produ tech production and IT. I did everything. I was like, mm -hmm. I wanted to learn as much as possible about the industry. And when I decided to move over to this side of the table to work with authors, I was looking for authors like might have, um, like the clients that I represent, whose voices have not been advocated before, who are looking for um, their stories to be told, for our uh, voices to be heard. So most of my career has been spent in representing uh, marginalized voices, the communities that um, uh, comprise of the LBG LGBTQ, as well as uh, Latinx and people of color. It's been a passion of mine and it's been fantastic to learn and grow with the industry through its evolution uh, to where we are today. That's awesome. So guys, thank you so much as you're joining us. Uh, please let us know your questions. We're gonna be answering your questions throughout the chat. So I'm gonna be looking at the chat box to throw some different questions from the audience to Sarita. In the meantime, Sarita, let's go. Um, I have some points that I wanna make sure we cover. Uh, let's start with, you know, when is a time for an agent? Like at what point, do you think a manuscript is ready to be sent to an agent? Great. So you want to make sure, first of all, that you are ready to publish, that not, um, that you've made that decision uh, with your eyes wide open. Um, is your project currently uh, right for the industry? And not just currently as in today, but you know, within the next two to five years. Is, is the uh, message that you're portraying in your uh, manuscript something that's going to be marketable? Um, and are you ready to market that book? A manuscript can take up to two years to place with an agent and then uh, even longer maybe uh, to place with a publishing house. Will the market for your book still be there in that time? If it is, um, then ask yourself, are you ready for the long haul of no's and yeses and possible maybes uh, that can happen as you query? If you are, if you're ready to make all, if you've asked yourself those three questions and you've set yourself up, you've uh, made sure your manuscript is ready to go, you've had it edited, you've uh, had it workshop maybe with your critique partners or your writers group, then you're ready to actually uh, query. And remember that when you do, it's not gonna be an immediate thing. It's not gonna be something that's gonna happen right now. So as soon as your work is out there querying, take a break, take a drink and start writing again. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a poll. I want to kind of get an idea of what folks are out there are writing. I'm going to publish a poll right now and uh, go ahead and fill in. Let us know what you're working on. Oh, we have a lot of young adults, 57% young adults, 33% adult. We got some picture books, 13% picture books, middle grade. Awesome. Most, most of the folks uh, on this call are writing between uh, young adult and adult. So awesome. that's, and that's one of your preferred, one of the markets that you specialize on, right, Sadie? 
Yeah, I work. Um, I I don't do picture books uh, yet. I'm I. I never say never because I may find a perfect book, a perfect manuscript that I just fall madly in love with. Uh, my clients write one. Uh, um, I'm going to take a look at it and and hopefully uh, represent it. But my my passion right now um, has been in the young adult um, and the adult market and what we call that. What used to be called that new adult, you know, that in between between, uh, you know, 18 and 24 year old. I love uh, books set in that era. I love in that age group talking about the things that are happening right now um, and things that the young people are actually uh, not just facing, but overcoming and and putting it in all different aspects, not just in uh, contemporary, but taking those elements and and putting themes uh, in fantasy and um in science fiction particularly i'm you know science fiction nerd as we can all <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah uh I, and when you're querying make sure that your agent that you're querying represents the types of works that you are uh working on and if you are going a, to it, stay in that space yeah, yeah a lot of people sometimes go oh well i love um, I, you know, I saw Saritza speaking at a uh, at a webinar, and I just love to work with her. And then they send me work, and and it's fantastic, and I think it's well written, but it's nothing that I represent or anything that I know remotely about. And so clearly, I'm not the right agent for you. And it feels um, like you've like like a wasted opportunity to me. I like I don't want to take someone's spot. So. Yeah make sure you research, you know, look up the authors and see which of um, the agents that you're looking to work with and see if they actually represent uh, the the market that you're working in, the young adult, middle grade, middle grade specifically, right now middle grade is growing and a lot of uh, agents that are rep of YA are also looking for middle grade, but are they looking more for upper middle grade or middle grade as a whole? Make sure that you know that. And they don't always have to be the the top agent in in that uh, market, though you definitely want to include them uh, in your list, but you also want to go out to the junior agents that are opening up yeah. um, their list right now that have a little bit more time that can specify uh, a little bit more in their feedback maybe of what um, it didn't work for them or what could possibly work for them because they have that extra time to devote. Uh, so look for all of those opportunities, obviously. But it's awesome that we have so many young adult and adult authors writing right now. I, I, I'm excited about it. <laughs> so we talked, and before I, we go to some of the questions that are kind of flowing in right now, we talked about when the manuscript is, is what makes the manuscript ready. Let's talk about when a manuscript is not ready. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, if your book is not complete and it is a fiction title um anywhere in you know yeah, picture book all the way up to um you know adult if your story is not complete if you don't know how it ends definitely do not send it in it is not ready um if you've only had one editor or one beta reader or one critique partner to read it and provide feedback it's likely not ready obviously you want to get more than one opinion um second you know if your beta reader is your significant other or a friend or a family member they may not give you the best feedback. To them, everything you write is wonderful and you are the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that doesn't make your manuscript ready. Um, make sure that you look through your manuscript with um, a little bit of separation. So look and see, do you have a lot of passive voice? Are you having any pacing issues? Ask your, your critique partners to look for those things because maybe you've gone nose blind to them. You've read in, in your manuscript a million times. Is the hook present in those first five pages? Can can you immediately let me know what your book is about? If your plot isn't clear and it's not concise in the work, you want to know that. And do, are the characters engaging me in my read? If at any point the feedback you're getting is, you know, I kind of lost so and so in in the third chapter, or I didn't even remember his name uh, by chapter five, that's a problem. Um, Make sure that you also have your synopsis complete before you query. If your synopsis is not written, um, chances are you're not, you're, your uh, query package is not ready. Most agents require your synopsis with the query. So if you don't have it ready and you're not quite sure how to do that, research, talk to other authors and make sure that your synopsis matches the any revisions that you've done to your manuscript. Sometimes they don't align. They have a, a manuscript done, they've revised it a couple of times and forgot to go back into the synopsis. And then we go and look and we're like, this is not how it ended at all. 
So and I just said uh, a resource guide that um, Ismael Williams, another one of the other authors of Las Musas, and yeah. I put together, and it's got a bunch of links uh, that you can use to get a lot of, of this information. Uh, let's go to some other questions. Um, so it's a, y Yanesi is asking, would you recommend hiring an editor before querying, or are better readers and critique partners solid? Um, you know, I I am all for avoiding having to, you know, fork out money uh, in the early stages of, of, of writing. You um, you don't have money, a lot of money to start with. So, you know, I, I highly, uh, I believe in freelance editors and I believe that we should hire them. However, not everyone has the ability to do so. So my usual first go-to is uh, working with a critique partner, working with someone who you want to look for a critique partner that is either already in the trenches querying or has already published and has a little bit more um, information that they can give to you, uh, kind of like in a mentorship way, because not only is their feedback to your manuscript going to be more effective, but they can also help guide you through the process when you have those days where you're like all i got today were you know rejections they can be like girl i was there you know not long ago and look what i ended up um your book is solid let well let's go back and look at the query maybe maybe we need to do some changes there make sure that um if you're working in a writer's group where you, it's a it's a collective that you are keeping uh an open mind about their feedback that you, you know, nobody likes to hear the baby's ugly. I get it, yeah. <laughs> but you have to understand, you know, everybody's like, this is my baby. I don't want anybody to hate it. I understand, but there are ways that you can make the baby look prettier, you know, make mm -hmm. make um, the, the story more engaging. Maybe, maybe the market has changed enough that the book that you're um, sending in is now getting a lot of competition. So how do you, change that a, a good critique partner could give you those um that feedback yeah. and a word of advice from a published author so um i actually the the manuscript that sarita picked up to represent uh my first manuscript which it, it actually did not sell i did hire um a developmental uh editor to work on it and just it is expensive like it, it was about a twelve hundred dollars to work on the full manuscript yeah so it, it's tough if you know I, I i have a full time job so i was able to manage it but i know that's not the case for a, a lot of people um so it it is better to work with a critique group and and work with a with a you know writers uh with a writers group uh to help to exchange chapters and give each other feedback and i just put out a poll about how many of you are part of a writers or critique group about 78% and and 21% that 21% try to find folks online yeah. uh or through uh writers conferences there's there's tons of resources out there to to find critique groups and writers groups in your local area and they don't have to be uh, physical ones either. You know, right now with COVID, we're trying to, you know, um, do, you know, social distancing. So look for writers groups that are virtual. Um, yes. the, the best thing about that is, is not only are you staying safe, but you're getting feedback from people all over the country who, who might also take a look at your book and from, from a different perspective that you may not have seen because in your local uh, community or in your area, that's not something that's relevant for you, but it could be relevant nationwide. So, so we have a lot of questions about querying and pitching. Uh, and okay. as, as we go, I have, I'm going to share my query letter that I wrote, I think it was probably yeah. like six years ago. That's uh, what it was. Was, oh my God, yes, it was like forever ago, time just flies. But it was yeah. the query letter that got me my agent, so I'm very proud of it. Um, I just it was shared very it good. Guys, it's, it's, it's on the way. <laughs> um, so tell us about the query process and, and I'm going to go um, through through some of the uh, questions we got here. OK, so, you know, we, we talked a little bit about what not to do before querying, making sure that your manuscript is, is, is ready to go as being the, the first one. But one of the things that we find a lot of the times with authors in their queries is that they've forgotten the very first step which is research google is your friend the having the opportunity to just 
hop on a browser and type in literary agents in the United States can give you just a, a plethora of information, not just names, but their websites, their information, their submission guidelines. Twitter has become the, the hub of publishing uh, right now, especially right now, as uh, publishing as a whole has, has, moved, has moved to a virtual environment. Use the hashtags pub tip and query tip to take a, uh, to get to know what's relevant in the industry right now, what the agents are talking about, what they're looking for. Um, understand that agents rep in different genres and their submission guidelines are going to be different. Our submission guidelines just in our agency are different for each agent because each agent represents a different area or a different uh, genre. We're looking for different things. Make sure you understand what they are. Create several sample queries. Don't just have one. Why? Because obviously some agencies, their query process is going to be different. It might require an email that has everything attached to it or that it has everything, you know, pasted in place. It, they may have um, a, a submission queue like we have at the agency with our query manager where everything is filled in. You have to cut and paste. Um, I usually tell my clients uh, when they're going to, prepare something for me to do everything in Word because it's easier. Uh, it's a more universal aspect, but also because if you're going to attach a document, Word is a lot easier for most agents to work with. Try not to, you know, attach PDFs or things like that. And then just take a, a deep breath. Understand that you're now putting your baby out there in the world for everyone <laughs> to see and to enjoy and just hit send. <laughs> So, okay, some of the questions we got here uh, from Desi, do you recommend opening a query letter with the pitch or should we open with why we are querying the agent? She says, uh, sorry, they, they say, I keep hearing that one of the other is best. What are your thoughts? You know, it's, um, it, it is subjective um, and most agents will talk about uh, about those uh, what they expect in a query in their query tip uh, hashtag query tip on Twitter or on their blogs or on uh, virtual uh, webinars like these I don't think that there is one right or wrong way except for not talking about your book at all in your query letter would be definitely the wrong way. Don't just say, hey, I am Maida, I do all these amazing things, come get my book. It's like, that's not gonna get me excited about what you write. <laughs> um, and remember that your book is more important than you are in a query letter, especially if it's a fiction title. Nonfiction, you are the platform, but for fiction, the book is it and we want to know the story first so i highly recommend starting with the pitch or with a log line um a quick hook that gives gets me excited about it um i mean i've heard the log, right the, log line, the log line the log line is a good start yeah like, because you know, that you know and that also you know prepare if you can have your query start with your log line you can use your log line as your elevator pitch so when you're getting ready to pitch the work at a conference or or to an editor when you have that you know, moment of being on an elevator with them and you get to talk to them about the book, knowing your log line quickly. Um, and if you write it several times in your query, obviously you're going to memorize it. Um, it's going to help. Uh, it's going to, it's going to show you also, am I hooking my reader? Am I hooking the agent with what I believe is my log line? Um, work with your critique partners to tighten that up because also then you can turn that log line into a pitch event when you go to Twitter pitches like so many oh, um, uh, uh, work with uh, that it's that the log line is that one line that just like encompasses your book and lets lets me know who they are what the setting is um, you know where you're taking you know why you're taking me on journey and how they come through you know do they do they fall in love at the end of the romance um, you know, do we find out who did it in the mystery? Um, are we going to a different planet and, and meeting, you know, a, a whole new set of, uh, bandits, you know, and space bandits or whatever. It gets that one line that immediately tells me what your book is about. And folks, you're at, like, if folks want to know some awesome example about log lines, I would just Google great examples about log lines. Yes. I actually just checked it out and there's like tons of examples online that you can look from like movies and books and you can just basically tailor uh, your manuscript and just find what is the log line for your manuscript. I have found out that usually it helps to have a comparable title on the log line. Like for example, 
Pretty in Pink meets the Vampire Slayer, you know, or something like that, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, I never thought of that. any John Hughes film, <laughs> yeah. you know, I guess would work. I know, um, right? Yeah, um, but so like that's that's perfect right there. Like using comps in a way, if you're not quite sure how, what your logline should be, if you know that certain readers are going to connect with your work because you write in the same vein or in the same style or in 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 the same genre um, as that author or as that movie, use that. Um, I like to combine my comps. I like to have um, a book as well as a movie because sometimes that uh, that's a little self-serving too because it also helps me show the editor that this is cinematic, it has a cinematic feel and therefore we're gonna sell yeah. the film and we're gonna have like <laughs> lots of opportunities but that's the Asian brain talking, I get it. Um, but I would say, you know, use things like, um, you know, a pretty in pink meets, you know, the vampire slayer or meets, you know, Buffy or something like that, that, that <laughs> kind of immediately connects two groups of people that, you know, are going to uh, immediately connect with your work. Yeah, people, I think the log line really should say, set the tone. What is, what is the tone of your book? Uh, who is it for? What's the audience? And what are some other, what's, what's a comp for it? You know, what, what is it like? So it's like something quick that, you know, agents can look at and read in like two seconds and they decide whether they're going to read the rest of the pitch. So one of the pitch, one of the log lines I wrote recently that we sold um, for uh, one of my clients, um, which is also a YA title. And I'm uh, sorry, sir, to, to clarify, this is a log line that you are sending to publishers for the correct. book. Correct. Correct. But it gives you kind of an idea of what we're meaning by, you know, okay. what your log line should be. Um, mine was um, uh, a, a lesbian retelling of Thelma and Louise, a young adult okay. lesbian retelling of Thelma and Louise. And that line alone, and it was only Thelma and Louise, we're not even combining like other things. Um, that immediately like editors kind of lean forward. Um, you that's know. Julia's book. Is that? That's yeah, Julia's that's book? Julia's Yay! book, which we yeah. sold Wednesday books. And, awesome. and it was only one long line, line because it immediately lets you know, okay, clearly this is a queer book. Clearly uh, there's there's some kind of uh, escape. There's, there's a, you know, Thelma and Louise, like everyone <laughs> knows what that is. Of course, we also then include it in the pitch because we have in the log line, Thelma and Louise, that in this one, no one flies off a cliff. You know, it's the, the, the buddy, the friendship leading into more, uh, you know, that, 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 that the book is about. And, but that one log line said it all. That's awesome. So when you look at your book, see if there's something that you could do with it that has that log line, that, that, it, that your log line could just be that one line that immediately lets everybody sit up and go, oh my God, tell me more. So Kelly's asking, she was told that the titles, movies and books need to be more than five years old. Is that true? And Eris, I know you're asking for, uh, you wanted to see a slide. Please let me know which slide you want to see again because um, I, 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 we've, we've had several. Uh, so Kelly, the books, do they need to be five years old or just need to be movies and books that everyone knows? Um, they don't, I, you definitely want to try to stay within a five year term if it's, if it's something new, if it's something, if your theme, if your topic, if what you're trying to connect with is something relevant to the market within the last five years you know if your book is is in the tone elements of the black lives matter of the hate you give then obviously you know you want to use that as a comp but um but if uh if it's something that everybody knows like Thelma and louise like um you know um lost boys you know for vampires you want to show that it's a different type of vampire. <laughs> yeah right like you know, like two nights like, no. ago we're watching lost boys <laughs> yeah you want to you want to you want to show that your vampire book uh is not you know like everybody else's you can say you know lost boys meets um you know kate daniels um lion series you know maybe you have that kind of urban fantasy world in your in your world now you're getting a book and you're getting you know, uh, a movie that kind of encompasses that world. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be within the length of the last five years, but definitely have to be well known. And if at some point somebody goes, I don't know that, then you know you need to change that comp. <laughs> okay, so we got two questions. One is, should we, uh, from Desi, should we still be querying during the pandemic? And, you know, or is this bad timing? Are agents even in the mood? 
And then let's also loop in a question from Jessica about uh, word count. She has a few rejections because her fantasy is 172,000 words long. It's not okay. too high. So if we could talk a little bit about submissions right now, pitches right now, queries, and then word count. Okay. And, so, and, and SA, sorry, Eris, I'm going to get that slide back up for you. Okay, go ahead, Teresa. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so the, the first question on submissions. Um, what was the qu first question on that submission? I didn't, I didn't uh, miss that. Is it okay to continue the query process right now during the pandemic? Are our agents yes. still working? Yes, definitely. We're all still working, um, you know, and, and, and many of us are looking for uh, a different type of escape, um, you know, for, for just diving into work and, and looking for the next great thing. Um, obviously, you need to be a little bit more patient with us right now, because we're also taking a look at how quickly uh, is the industry going to rebound so that we can go out on submission with works, right? So we're looking at things that we're um, acquiring and saying, okay, is this is this still gonna be uh, something we want to take out in the next you know, year, uh, within the next year? Um, if it's, unfortunately, I would say if it is currently uh, about a pandemic, um, it may not necessarily be the best time to go out with that book. However, I will say there are some agents who are like looking for that stuff. So research, you know, check them out on Twitter, check them out on, on, on their websites and their blogs. Are they talking about, you know, watching Contagion and, you know, all in playing pandemic and, and all of this stuff? Is that stuff that they're doing? And you're like, okay, they're, my book is definitely going to fit in with them right now. Send it then. Um, but be a little bit more patient. Some of us are extending our response times instead of saying, we'll get back to you in eight to 10 weeks. We might say, you know, it could be a, a good 16 to 20 weeks before we're able to get back to you. And it has a lot to do with also our mental, our mental health, you know, where we are. Um, yeah. Most of us that work from home and have been working from home long before this pandemic still have an opportunity to get out and, 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 you know, decompress right with people and hang out and do things and we're not able to do that and so we're having to refocus on on mental health and how we're doing that so just be a little patient but definitely continue to to query i think most agents are still looking for that next big thing so and publishers are buying right now the reality yeah. is publishers are still working yeah, publishers are still working. They're still buying. Um, I don't know how long that will last, obviously, because we don't know what the economy is going to be like in the next few months. But that shouldn't keep you from writing and that shouldn't keep you from querying the book you wrote. Um, you know, if, you, if your book is finished, it's ready to go, you know, you're ready to, to get out there with it, do it, go for it. Uh, just know that it might be a little bit longer to, to place it. And that doesn't mean it's not going to. It just, yeah. instead of maybe getting picked up uh, before Christmas, it might get picked up just after. So let's talk about word count. What what should we what should uh, writers be looking at work count? What is and what's going to so, kind of kick you off the list and, and and make an agent say, well, that's too long. I'm not going to even look at that. Yeah. So uh, here's the thing with word counts. People always get like a little uh, upset when we mention that you need to stick within a certain limit and understand that we're telling you this, assuming most likely rightly that. All of you are debut authors. You, you don't have anything else published. No one has seen your work before. Um, we're getting to know you through your very first thing. And if you go, fall outside of those word counts, there is, it, it gives us a red flag of either, if it is too high, there's a chance that this is very wordy. It has not been revised. It has not been tightened. It likely will have uh, a lot of passive voice or a lot of repetition. Um, and so that doesn't mean that it's always the case. It's just the very first thing we think of when we see that huge number. We're like, mm, it's likely going to be too uh, too much work. I'm going to have to wait to revise several times before we're yeah. even ready to go out with it. Because the word counts for us are also the word counts for the publishing industry. We have yeah. to make sure that then when we send it out, the publisher isn't like, oh, no way that's going to fit with us, um, both on the low and the high end. Also understand that uh, there are word counts for specific age groups because we understand in the publishing industry what those age groups can manage, not just in what they can read, but in what they can afford. 
and the price point is tied to your word count. If your word count um, is, you know, if you have a science fiction epic that's, you know, 190,000 words for your adult science fiction novel, and you're telling me you are the next George R. R. Martin, you're <laughs> making me nervous because that's going to be tough <laughs> to deliver. That's just like saying any children's author is, you know, the height of J.K. Rowling. It's that's not the case. And you're setting the bar and you're setting the expectation a little too high for yourself and for us. So we give you guidelines to stay within so that you have a better opportunity to not immediately go on the negative side with that agent in your, um, you know, initial, your first, yeah, your first uh, when you're impression. So guys, we do next week, we do have a uh, ask editor session with my editor at Harper, uh, Blink Harper Collins. I just put out the promo on top now, so you can feel free to register for that. And they're gonna be answering um, all the questions from the publisher side, which is gonna be awesome. Okay, so a few more questions here. I'm sorry guys, we have a lot, so I'm trying to keep up with everybody's questions. Okay, from Melissa, authors that are fluent in English and Spanish, are mm -hmm. agents publishers open to the author doing their own translation or do agents publishers prefer to hire a professional translator? So and I commend Alyssa for wanting to do her own translation because <laughs> I don't think you can pay me enough to translate my book at this point. <laughs> I know, and mind you, I am fluent in English and Spanish and I read in English I and Spanish. I and I it. couldn't possibly. So I always, any author who is able to translate their own work, I am just like here for you. You are amazing. Continue being the awesome person that you are. Um, I will say that most publishers um, prefer not to have the author translate the work um, unless it is their first language and they um, prove that they have both manuscripts ready at the from the at the forefront basically you're going in with an english and a spanish manuscript done and both of them are ready to go that's rich. yeah and, that, and that's a lot of work because it's, it's, it's like you don't even know if the first manuscript is going to sell like why would you exactly. that time you could have spent working on something completely different to have it ready in case that first manuscript doesn't get you an agent agent you have another manuscript that's ready and if go. you go into an agent i will tell you most agents they only want it in the language that they speak and represent because they're going to read it and they're going to move it forward yeah. um if you know and i will tell you i am lazy when it comes to that i don't want to have to read a manuscript six times in english and in spanish and i will have to probably read it six times i can tell you i read myra's yeah. book six times before yes. we actually said i read out my book like 200 times people so you better really really <laughs> like what you're white what you're writing because that's what's coming you're gonna have to read yeah. that manuscript a hundred freaking times <laughs> and a lot of it is and, you know and and so that's that's the, the the reason and also the other reason why publishers usually like to hire a, a translator is because those rights are are sold they're licensed yeah. to someone else um and that is an expert and not only do they translate it properly for the market remember spanish is one that has five different uh, translations. You know, we have South American, Caribbean, uh, we have North American, believe it or not, <laughs> now, which includes Chicano. Um, we have Europeans, Castilian, Spanish, and um, and Basque. So there's a lot of different uh, language formats that need to be done. And the publisher, that's what they license the work for and what the agent then helps you sell those rights for. So before we move on to the point of the big moment of the call, I want to make sure we're touching on the synopsis because I think this is uh, this is a point that some writers tend to overlook. We we focus a lot on the query letter, but then we yes. don't pay as much attention in the synopsis. So what can you say on that? So your synopsis is not your outline. Um, you obviously have an outline, uh, whether you're a pantser or a plotter or a plotter like me, eventually you end up with some outline, right? You, you kind of like go back and remember that you did this, that, or the other. So you, your synopsis is actually just a summary of the work that describes your plot from beginning to end. And it, it, uh, it summarizes the main plot, not the subplots, not the side characters. It is your main character and how they move forward. It will cover your main conflict and the resolution of the story. You gotta give me the spoilers. Don't tell me, oh, you have to read it to find how it ends. I'm not gonna read it to find out how it ends. I wanna know that in the synopsis, you have complete, you have given me the, you have uh, fulfilled the promise of your plot. Um, and that, you know, if, if the stakes are really high, 
uh, the conflict uh, at resolution is high. Tackle the plot points one by one. Make sure that you have your rising action and your tension where it's supposed to be. Don't worry about the subplots. I'm not interested in those right now because those I'm gonna I'm gonna fall in love with through the story. That's gonna help enrich and grow the story. But in the summary, in your synopsis, you're basically just sitting with your girlfriend, dishing it out. Let me tell you how this story mm -hmm. goes. Okay, so first of all, so and so came over and started telling me about this. That's how, that's your synopsis. Keep it um, light. I usually tend uh, to recommend that authors work to reduce your synopsis to about two pages. If you can get your synopsis down to two pages, not only have you just focused on the plot, but you're gonna be able to write your log line a lot better because you're gonna find yeah. it in that synopsis. Highlight what's unique about the work too. If, if you know, you're writing about vampires um, and your log line includes that you know, Lost Boys thing, tell me why it's, about, <laughs> it's different. Um, your synopsis, regardless of how your book is written, should always be in third person. If your manuscript is first person, limited point of view, great, that's fine. I don't want the synopsis that way. The synopsis is you dishing on the story. Tell me more than show me here. The synopsis is for, for, for that passive voice, is for you to tell me, you know, Frodo and Sam went to take the ring <laughs> and throw it yeah. in the lake. Like, you know, give me all of that. Um, your formatting should be single spaced, uh, keep it to 12 point, you know, serif type, preferably, um, or sans serif, um, no more than two pages if possible. Obviously some, some, uh, stories are going to require that you go into a third page. That's fine. But try not to go beyond that. Introduce your main characters and your conflict in the very beginning. I want to know that Harry is going to Hogwarts, like from the get go. And it's, um, it's good to have your to run the query letter and the synopsis by your writing group or your critique group because I mean yes, I absolutely. remember I agonized over the <laughs> synopsis. It was like harder to write the synopsis than the query letter because it was just I like I'm like too. what should I include? You know? Yeah, you know, a lot of it uh, people forget that that if your plot is character driven, then make sure you show me some of the emotion, you know, tell me some of the emotion that they're feeling in the synopsis in a quick thing of um, when, when that dark moment happens, don't just tell me a dark moment happens. Um, you know, tell me Harry watches Dumbledore falling from the Gryffindor tower and can't, and, and under, doesn't understand what's happening. There you go. <laughs> You've given so, me that whole chapter. <laughs> in we one have sentence. a question from Sophia about the queer letters. She says, uh, I thought query letters were supposed to be 300 words. Is there like a, a word count for, I, I've never heard that before. There's not a word count, but yes, definitely keep it to 250 to 300 words, you know, maybe 350, okay. I, I wouldn't go beyond that. Um, again, it's, you know, your query letter is your introduction to the work. It's basically the, the same type of introductory letter you would uh, attach to your resume when you're going to, to a job, um, except that a big part of your query letter, um, your middle two paragraphs are gonna be about the book. Your first uh, paragraph, your first sentence can be your log line, can be, a, or it could be just a greeting. You know, Saritza, it was great hearing you at the Las Musas webinar. Thank you for the information. My, you know, 57,000 word middle grade book is about blah, blah, blah. And give me the two paragraphs that, you know, are your query. And then go right into your bio. Your bio should be short, sweet, only about the book, you know. Um, so I, a question you know, about the bio. Dane has a question about the bio. He says, my novel was converted from a hit stage play and landed me a segment on ABC News. Should awesome. I include that link in my query? I know many agents don't like or automatically reject queries with links. Please advise. I wouldn't include the link. Um, and a lot of the times we don't click on links because it can uh, you know, lead to, uh, you know, a, a virus or, or any of that. I mean, you may not have meant to, uh, to do that, you, you know, but we were just very cautious. Um, a lot of agents and editors partic particularly um, are, are not even allowed to click on links. Um, they're, they, they break, you know, the, the, the IT department breaks them so that they, they don't uh, introduce any, any virus to the hardware. But I would say, instead of putting a link, I would make that in, in, in your bio. You know, um, I would say, you know, my novel converted to a hit stage play, picked up on a segment um, on ABC News recently. Uh, and you can even say, or ABC News on, you know, Wednesday, you know, March, whatever. Um, 
just so that we know that it was it was recent, it was relevant to the work. Um, don't include information that we don't need to know uh, about your bio. While I love knowing all about you know your kids, your kids, <laughs> dogs, you know the things that how well they're doing in school. That's all fantastic. Um, but in your query, I really want to know about why you want to why you wrote the book. What was it about this story that in your life? could tie to it because that helps me figure out if the platform is there for you. And even though it may be a fiction title, it helps me understand, oh, Myra is the right person to talk about this. One, because of her background in uh, talking about her relationship with her, gra her grandmother and her culinary um, uh, passion. At the same time, she also has a platform established by working with CNN. Right. So yeah, and that was the I, only yeah. it was the only personal uh, bio thing that I included in my pitch letter is just like I'm a producer for CNN. Um, mm -hmm. OK, so let's go to another question from Eris. When and how do we send a synopsis to an agent? You would do that. Uh, with and, your and, and, and then sorry, another question. So that was when and how. And then the other one is should a synopsis be double or single spaced? Should be single spaced. Um, you know, I don't, don't, don't try to shortchange yourself either. You know, there's formatting guidelines for a reason. Don't go below 12 point. Uh, it, you know, most of us wear glasses. It gets kind of painful <laughs> to reduce. And I will tell you one thing I do now is I highlight the synopsis because mine is pasted into the, um, uh, query manager. I highlight it and I paste it into word. And if it goes over three pages, I stop at the third page and and then go okay. back and say, That's good to know. It, I didn't connect with the work because clearly there was just so much going on and I never got to, and the query didn't give me enough information. Um, mind you, I still read the pages. If the pages are not strong, if your synopsis isn't good and your query isn't great, but your pages are beautiful, I could care less about the query and the synopsis. I can help you with that. But so don't stress over that, but make sure that they are as, as polished and as professional as possible because that lets me know that not only did you do your work you do diligence your homework you're going to be someone that is going to be professional about the career that we're about to embark on together okay so i have a question from mariana perez uh how about if the manuscript is in spanish are there any agents willing to represent authors with a book in spanish um, I personally don't know authors, uh, uh, agents currently working uh, only in Spanish. Um, most of my, most of the authors that I work with, whether they're Latino um, or not, um, generally work in the in the U.S. English uh, language market. But I would research um, agents in other countries, in Latin countries, uh, those that are. Uh, going to connect with the work too. So if your uh, Spanish manuscript is set in the Caribbean, then look for agents who work in the Caribbean because that's the first place they're going to sell. That's where the primary rights of your book are going to sell, which would be the equivalent of the English language rights being sold in the U.S. Um, if you try to, if you can't find them there, but you can find them in Spain or or um, in South America, then you know understand that they might have revisions for you on the language because the Spanish needs to match the market that they work with. Okay, Les is asking, do all agents always read the pages along with the query? I can't speak for all uh, agents. I can say that most of us do. Um, most of us uh, understand that queries and, and synopsis is a, is a different side of your brain. Uh, and you kind of have to separate yourself from the work long enough to be able to write those and not everybody is able to do that especially when you first start writing a query letter um so i will say most of us go to the pages even if the query and the synopsis are poor i will say that i don't like to read the pages if the query is like a one sentence thing of well, just read the pages. Well, no, <laughs> that's, that's just not disrespectful. Just, that's just disrespectful. Yeah. yeah, it's like you, you, you follow clearly, the process. <laughs> why did you even send it to me? Like you didn't yeah. even want to to follow the guidelines. Um, I would, I, I, but yes, I generally read all of the, and my pages are usually only asked for the first five, and from there, I request more if I think that uh, the voice is strong, the the themes are are relevant, the market is strong then I'll, uh, and, or I feel like I'm the right person. I'm so excited about these first five pages. I need to read more. Then I immediately ask for a, a larger sample. So on the topic of the queries, Victoria has a question about salutations for uh, married 
agents what is preferred, but can you actually broaden that topic to see what is the preferred salutation just in general? So right now, um, you know, the beauty of evolution, right, is that we now have, uh, you know, the opportunity to not necessarily address agents by a gender moniker. So if you are unsure how the agent identifies, gender identifies, if it's not on their bio, on my signature, it says, you know, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, everywhere on my, ty uh, my website, the agency website, Twitter, it shows what my gender pronouns are. But if they are not visible to the, uh, anywhere on the agent when you do your research, um, look to see in the bio on the website if it specifies things like Mrs. Hernandez works with blah, blah, blah. Then you can use your salutation as dear Mrs. Hernandez. I will say that most agents now also are fine with you addressing them by first name uh, in a um, semi-formal uh, fashion. So you can say, hi, Saritza. It was great seeing you at the webinar, blah, blah, blah. Or dear Saritza, I, we're usually fine with that. Um, again, check in. If you're unsure. Yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I use dear Saritza on mine. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of the times people sometimes worry so much about offending that then they just stop themselves completely yeah. and don't move forward. It, I will tell you, most of us, if not all of us, prefer that you ask um, than offend. And we will not be offended if at no point did we let you know and you misrepresented it. Um, but it would be worse if you just said, dear agent. Um, okay. Don't just write that. Don't say to whom it may concern. Uh, yeah, yeah, address you gotta it have, to, you guys gotta address you it someone. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's address talk, it to someone. Let's talk about the moment, the call, when you finally get through. An agent is interested in your work, and they reach out and say, "Hey, let's hop on the phone." And I shared the questions that I asked you during our call. Uh, Isme Williams and I, another author from Los Musas. Uh, we went through the list and kind of tweaked it and cleaned it up. But uh, those were pretty much some of the questions that we had during the call. So so let's talk about that moment when you guys make the decision. What's the timeline? What happens? How should authors, you know, writers kind of react? How do they deal with that? Um, you know, I, the, I will tell you that for me, the call is almost as nerve wracking for me or more <laughs> so than it is for the author because, okay. you know, we, we prepare for this call. Um, We've done our work uh, in the background, you know, not only did we read the manuscript and possibly read it twice um, and created our questions uh, for the author, um, but we've also like researched you. We went and, and clicked on your website. We looked at your social media. We uh, maybe followed you on social media, um, trying to get a, an understanding of, of who you are outside of the author persona that I, saw in the query. I didn't list, right? know that. I didn't know you had done yeah. all that. My, oh, my yeah. whole background search on me. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we, you know, we don't, I mean, I don't do like a whole background thing. because <laughs> That's just a little creepy. But I do want to make sure that, um, you know, that that when I go to offer rep, I'm going to, I know that I want to work with this author. I want to make, uh, I want to make our relationship uh, a strong one from the get go. Understand that when you sign with an agent, you are signing a contract and therefore you are locked into that. It's almost like a marriage. And so you know, communication is important. And if if I feel that when I look at social media and things like that, that some of the things that you uh, connect with are not anything I would maybe connect with or understand or, or feel like they could be a, a deterrent about how I would represent you properly, then I make that decision to step away and say, you know, I just, I don't think I'm the right agent for you. But if I think all of those other pieces are there, uh, I know that we can work well together. I know that um, the 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 work that there, there there's more in the pipeline. I think that there's more in the pipeline or yeah. especially in the website when they, when authors put uh, current works in process and they might like include a quick little line about uh, currently working on a middle grade, you know, uh, Ramona style book. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds awesome. Let me go see. <laughs> um, that lets me know that you're, you know, looking to make a career out of this. Then I give you, then we have the conversation. We, we, uh, we talk about not just the work, because I know I asked uh, Myra a million questions about, you know, where yeah. did the story come from? How did you, how did you even think of, you know, did it you was start wrecking. 
<laughs> yeah. completely nerve wracking because I'm like, oh my God, please let her like me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always the same thing with me because, you know, we, we, we offer rep and, and we finish the conversation and we hang up and it's that whole, no, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. And you eventually <laughs> like hang up and you're like, oh my God, I, I sit there and I'll go, oh God, please let her pick me because well, I'm sure there's a bunch of other mean- people. Yeah, they did because there were two other people who had the manuscript. So I remember just having to tell you, hey, like, thank you so much. I so appreciate this. You know, I'm super interested, but I have to let the other agents that have the full manuscript know that I received an offer of representation and wait until, you know, give them a couple of weeks to respond. I think I gave them two weeks to respond. Yes. And I, and I highly recommend that, you know, before anything else, please remember that if you get an offer of representation uh, from an agent, uh, let all of the other agents who have not passed on the work already, who are still reviewing the work or who might be considering it, let them know that you have an offer of representation and let the person who offered know that you would like at least two weeks or at the most, I would say two weeks. Um, you know, maybe right now with everything that's happening a couple extra days because things are just kind of like a little up in the air with everything. But uh, but I would, you know, two weeks is, is standard and, and that is comfortable. And I would say no agent would, no reputable agent would have a problem with saying, please take the, the two weeks that you need to speak with everyone. Yeah. We want to make sure that the choice that that you make of us being your representative is the right one for you. We ask you a million questions during the call, you know, not just about the book, but about what you want to do about your career, about the works that you're working on, the things you want to think about. Are you planning on writing in a a different market? Are you looking to um, write uh, plays and scripts for TV or any of that, that we think when we look at the work could be something or when we did our research, we found, oh, you know, Myra is a producer with CNN. Is she writing documentaries for them? Or is, is she working on a different kind of um, aspect? All of those pieces kind of help us understand too, how are we going to help navigate your career? Um, yes. And make sure that when you have the call, you ask all the questions you need to know about, is this the right person for you um, and for your work and for your career? And know too that, you don't have to, you know, your agent doesn't have to be your agent for life. There are those of us who have that opportunity to get to work with a client from the beginning to the end of their career. And it's a beautiful Teresa, thing. I want you to be my agent for life. I just, I yeah. hope you know that. <laughs> I I no, but I want, I know that a lot of, uh, a lot of authors also have opportunities uh, to switch gears. You know, they'll, yeah. they'll sign with an agent uh, working in maybe in children's books and they start working in, in primarily just chapter books and picture books. And later, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, they write this epic, you know, science fiction adult saga and decide that they want to move in that direction permanently and feel like they no longer are going to be the right uh, connection with that agent. That's a great conversation to have. Understand from the get-go, how do we part ways if we need to? That should be part of your call. Um, That should be part of the agency agreement. They they should show you their agency agreement and offer it at the end of the call and say, hey, I'm gonna forward my agency agreement for you to take a look at. Please review it, ask me any questions. You can do it via email or whatever. We can hop on another call. We can get on a Zoom chat, whatever is easier for you but make sure that you understand all of the pieces of that representation because getting into a contract is easy. You sign at the dotted line, but getting out of a contract (laughs) and then every contract, not just your agency one, publishers ones too, you need to know and go in with your eyes wide open. And as an author, you can ask for changes. If there's something you don't feel comfortable with, you can ask for changes for your representation agreement or your publishing agreement. Okay, yeah, so and I would have, say you, you. I, I just want to add one thing. There is a caveat to changing uh, uh, language in a contract, but that should also be explained to you by the agent. If there are parts of the agency agreement that are, you know, their indemnity clause or, you know, things outside of, uh, you know, where where the adjudication or juris, the jurisdiction of their contract is, you know, if we're in New York, the jurisdiction is going to have to be in New York. You can't ask yeah. to change it to, you know, uh, Utah because you live there. That's just, that's not how that works. But everything else should be uh, an opportunity for you to negotiate language or understand why the language is already in the way that you need it to be. Maybe you didn't understand it. Maybe we need to clarify it in the language of the contract. We can certainly do that. Um, and, And agents should be willing to do that. 
Okay, so let's go to some questions. Gloria is asking, an agent asked for a full manuscript. She asked me to send it whenever I'm ready. It's two to three weeks acceptable. Want to make sure everything is as polished as possible. So I'm taking a moment or should I send it right away? Um, I, I would let them know that you are polishing the manuscript and that you will submit it within two to three weeks. I would say that usually when, when we ask for a full manuscript, we kind of want to see it right away because we're excited about it then. Um, it's kind of but, like so when you start querying, really, you should have, you should be sure that it's as polished as possible. Yeah, your full manuscript should be polished. And, you know, obviously, depending on the submission guidelines, you submit the partial request as as needed, whether it's five pages, 10 pages, whatever, uh, the full manuscript. So the whole manuscript should be ready to go. But I understand sometimes authors feel a little bit of hesitation, like, oh, my God, I, I need to make some changes based on a previous um, you know, feedback, you can say that. You can say, hey, Sarita, uh, thank you for the full request. I will send it to you uh, within, I would say no more than three or four days. Um, I received some feedback that I'm, I'm incorporating into the manuscript and want to make sure it's polished for you. That is fine. That's professional and that allows it. But two to three weeks is a little bit long, especially right now I mean, that everybody's looking yeah. for stuff to do. Because I will say my experience with us, I sent you the query letter on a Friday morning you responded right away saying, I want the full. <laughs> and by Monday, you read it over the weekend. By Monday, you were like, let's get on the phone on Tuesday. And by Tuesday, we had I had an offer of representation. So everything and happened I like say, super fast. And I want to say, it doesn't <laughs> always work that way. There yeah. are times, you know, everything, planets have to align. I get that. Yeah. You know, uh, the world has to, to, to be in a certain way for things to be a quick turnaround like that. But there are times where I, I, I know for, for a fact, uh, my client, April Daniels, her book, D Dreadnought, I got that query um, and it took me, I want to say, two months to get the nerve <laughs> to <laughs> respond because I, I requested the, the full right away. But it took me two months to get the nerve to say, I definitely absolutely think this is going to be wonderful and I want to <laughs> have it right now. And it was because it was completely different. It had never been seen in the industry. We'd never seen a trans YA superhero written by a trans author. It was going to be the very first time and I was nervous and I didn't want to mess it up for her. And, and I remember having conversations with other agents and having conversations, you know, within the agency and with friends. And I'm like, Oh my God, I love this book. And finally my husband's like, if you talk about this book and you don't call her, <laughs> we're going to have words. <laughs> Um, and she's, so, she's won like a ton of awards. That book has won. Yeah, won a ton I of love awards. that book. Uh, it's it's fantastic. But it was but but I'm 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 letting you know that it it's difficult to sometimes make that quick turnaround. I will say now where I was uh, with April and where I was with Myra in my career, um, I wasn't at the level that I am uh, in the agency. My responsibilities weren't um, as high, so I was I was building my list and only focusing on my list. I was growing that. Uh, pretty well and pretty rapidly. So I could devote the time to yeah. not just review the work and, and go through the revisions and all of that. But as Myra knows now, that's not yeah. the case. <laughs> she sends yeah. me a manuscript now and it takes me months to get back to her. So we got some questions about querying Sarita. I, I shared um, in, the, in the documents how to query her, how to pitch okay. her and her query guidelines and what kind of stuff she's looking in the manuscripts. I'm gonna to try to get a couple more questions here before we run out of time. Uh, Desi's asking about writers from marginalized communities. Should we spell it out in the query? If we're um, a, a writer from a marginalized community? Yes, if especially, um, so so I would, I, I immediately said yes, but I do wanna make the thing of, you do not have to out yourself. Please feel, please don't feel like you have to out yourself in order to be, the right person to write the book. We will know it when we read it and we will have that conversation in the call. Um, you know, um, I, I, I understand that when it's, when you're from a marginalized community where you are a person of color, where you're from, um, you know, Latinx versus, uh, you know, uh, a white cisgender, um, it, it might be a little bit easier or comfortable for you to say, I am a, you know, Latina author residing in New York City, uh, born and raised in Puerto Rico. Uh, my story about Puerto Rican, you know, Maida is about blah, blah, blah. And that can be fine. 
But um, I know that for uh, many in the LGBTQ community, they don't feel comfortable. They're not ready to out themselves and we should never push someone to do so. So only do so if you feel that it is important and that you're ready to do that. So another good question, <laughs> Pat Simons asked at the beginning of the webinar, uh, should agents be aggressively seeking opportunities for their clients? And this is something that actually I didn't know before uh, before I got a, a literary agent, but not only do you guys go out and sell, you also tell us, hey, so there are these opportunities out there. Are you interested? Yes. So not all agents do this, um, and it's not because they don't want to or because they can't. It also is depend dependent upon where they are in the agency and how their agency works. Um, large agencies have like an entire department that all they do is make sure that they look for opportunities for their illustrators to uh, get work for hire, for um, also authors to write uh, to spec, you know, to to write the next IP project for Marvel or, or Star Wars or Disney or whatever. Um, but there are smaller agencies where the agent does all of it. In our agency, our agents do everything single piece for their clients. And so we look for opportunities for our clients based on what we know um, of the market and what our age, what our authors can uh, meet, the deadlines that they can meet. So obviously, I'm not going to send out my client on a uh, an IP project when I know that they're currently working on a manuscript that is under contract and has a deadline. But I do know that I want that IP uh, to understand that MIDA will be available for a project in about 18 months. So if you've got stuff going on that you know it's going to be releasing in the next 36, she'll be ready in 18 months or beforehand. Let me know. And we send out these pitch packages that let uh, yeah. Marvel and Disney and, you know, these these uh, large IP uh, projects, you know, Jane the Virgin. We had a conversation about this with Myra for, for that uh, novel. Um, you know, there are, are available and we let our clients know, is this something that you want to pursue? We have yeah. that conversation, but yes, we, we aggressively look for those things. Um, not just, I would say in, in, uh, print market too, because it can also include for gaming, uh, writing for, uh, serializations, uh, you know, like the game, the, the multimedia games that are on, on uh, phones and stuff like that. We look for all of those opportunities. So guys, this is all the time we have today, but there will be, this broadcast will be um, reposted on the Las Musas YouTube channel. If you wanna support the work Las Musas is doing, please buy our books. As you know, all of our book events got canceled for the entire season. So <laughs> please support us by buying our books. You know, we'd love that. And Isma and I are gonna be having an awesome uh, book club, and that's going to be on April 16th at 4 p.m. You can go ahead, you can go ahead and register on that on the Musa's uh, webinar channel. I just put it up on the promo, so the link is available. Uh, if you want to query Saritza, I just sent you the query guidelines on the on the files, or you can go to the Corvisiero Literary Agency website, and all of her information is there. She is absolutely a dream if she calls you you are incredibly lucky so thank you so much Sarita for being here with us today and answering all of everybody's questions um if we didn't get to your question please join us for the ask editor uh webinar that's going to be uh next week and please stay safe and take care of yourself and your family thank you everybody thank you Maida, for this thank i really you. appreciate it okay bye bye <laughs>